So what are we going to do? As a nation, it's a rhetorical question. As a nation and as ourselves, are we going to be like Noah, that bastard who built the ark and then floated away, leaving everyone else to suffer rising sea levels? Are we going to escape in some other way? Some people like me are being encouraged to just wait for that very unbiblical day when the sweet chariot will sweep down and carry us away, leaving the rest of you to deal with the mess left behind. Or in the secular world, we're being encouraged that there actually is a planet B, and maybe we should be investing billions and billions in a rocket ship to fly our species off to it, so that our species survives as this planet collapses into ecological calamity. It's worth remembering that none of us here are going to be on that rocket ship. Are we going to sit around and wait for God to come and fix this mess, like the first Christians did in the face of the massive injustices of the Roman Empire? If we're going to, it's worth remembering that 2,000 years ago they were saying that any day now God was come, going to come along and fix this mess. <laughs> or perhaps we'll wait for a God-like corporation to come along and save us. If we just get rid of all of this stupid red tape and green tape and get out of their way so they can make lots of money, they can give us jobs and then we'll be able to afford to fix the environment that they stuffed up making the money in the first place. <laughs> what would happen instead if we or perhaps our nations acted more like Zacchaeus he was that guy who, when he heard the good news that he was loved and valuable, and the really challenging news that everybody else was just as loved and just as valuable, gave up half of his possessions and half of his privilege and offered to refund anybody that he'd defrauded or exploited five times over. Imagine if the richer nations in the world, or just the ones that claim to be Christian, did a Zacchaeus in this context of climate change. Or maybe the prodigal son, returning humbly to the earth family when he finally came to his senses and realised what he was doing, having used up half of the family's resources. Or the rich young man who went away, and admittedly he was sad about it, but he went away to share all that he had with the poor so that he could follow Jesus. As we head towards Christmas, it's worth remembering that it's those kind of people, Zacchaeus that despised tax collector, the prodigal son and the rich young man who modelled the challenge that Jesus offered people, as of many other religious leaders around the world, to do for others what we would want them to do for us at the table of the tomb. So we gather here today to call on our leaders around the world to remember those others. We demand that they stop just offering word after word after word and instead take on board some sacrificial actions on our behalf for those others, for other humans, for other species and for other generations not yet born.